Welcome to Community Health TV, powered by Community Therapy. I'm here with accredited practicing dietitian Grace, and we're speaking about disordered or fussy eating. So a broad and, and large topic, and we're just looking to try and summarize some key takeaways for healthcare professionals, coordinators, general public about things that dietitians think about, how to identify some reasons to refer to a dietitian, and what are some things that dietitians actually do? So disordered, fussy eating, what's a sort of broad statement there of like what that actually means? Uh, typically disordered eating or fussy eating is usually defined by where we're having less than say 20 foods. A um, lot of more dislikes than likes and that may be related to the texture of food, the smell of food, it may be the temperature of the food as well. So it is different for everyone. Um, and the Quite reason- Quite a varied yeah, topic. Yeah, yeah. But the reason that it can become a concern or impact our health is mainly because when we restrict foods or we restrict food groups, that can then impact um, such as, it, there may be a developmental delay, it may impact our growth or development as a child, um, but that it then can start to impact our nutrient intake and our ability to function as well so that's where malnutrition which there's a video on malnutrition that you can go back and watch um, around malnutrition and just it, you know our ability to manage our weight and manage our um, functional capacity to engage mm. with day-to-day -day so activities. it can lead to complications yeah, yeah. yeah so as a different healthcare professional, not a dietitian, as a coordinator, as a family member, friend, how would I identify that somebody that I care or support um, for is living with disordered or fussy eating? What are some things I'd be like, noticing? Uh, maybe, so for example, um, if someone was going to a day program, it may be that that particular individual isn't eating whilst at the day program. Um, that may be around our relationship with food, for example, or it may be that when consuming main meals or snacks, there's quite refusal of food or noticing that when we're consuming a meal that foods may have to be separated as an example um, and not mixed together. So in the aged care or disability sector yeah. I don't like the way that this is always referred to of like behaviours of concern really I, but I think it leads into something people can think of of that person's behaviour has changed around that so if you're seeing that somebody's behavior is changing around meal time and interaction with food, it may be something that, okay, we need to consider what's going on here and maybe there's something a dietitian could yeah. identify and help with. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's certainly um, an area that dietitians can help with. Um, in terms of identifying the challenges for that particular individual and then helping to perhaps try new foods or um, overcome barriers that they have with food um, because it is about you know, improving our relationship and building a positive relationship with food um, to then have the confidence and ability to try new foods. So um, it, you know, it, it's not, it is a very patient area to be in. So what I mean by that is, you know, we, we won't all of a sudden be able to um, resolve disordered eating overnight. It does take time and patience um, and hard work as well to be able to improve those behaviours around food, but it is certainly achievable and it's achievable with the health professionals around you, including, you know, a dietitian, but perhaps a behaviour support therapist and occupational therapist as well. Mm. What's a good example of, you know, a real life example or story of um, someone you or the team have helped on putting you on the spot once again <laughs> of, yeah, somebody that had a specific um, disordered eating situation and then maybe how they were helped and what sort of things took place? Yeah, um, so 
A particular client that I am seeing at the moment is actually a younger individual um, and he is living with disordered and fussy eating. And so, like I said, it does take time to implement strategies. It may take 20 to 30 times before trying a food. So um, something at that particular point, it was discussed with the parents um, about their involvement. And simply to start with, we just spoke about perhaps, you know, starting to set the dinner table at night or starting to help do the dishes and help prepare or plate meals. And then from there, we, we had a bit of a, I would call it a um, a template that included the smell, the touch, the taste, if we were willing to go that far. And just having the conversation, um, today we're going to try carrots, for example. Um, you know, how, how does it make you feel? How, what does it feel like? What does it smell like? Would you like to try it today? Um, so it's really starting small and building on that. And over time, we have actually increased um, the different types of foods this individual is having, having. So that's a really awesome achievement. And it's mm. something that we're continually working on over time, no. uh, which is very exciting. Yeah. That's a really good example, because I think it once again gives insight to the broad scope of strategies and interventions that a dietitian uses. Like, I don't think many people would think that a dietitian is going to look at sort of that planning and structure and involvement in what we would say maybe more from an occupational therapist point of view, activities of daily living. So like getting the person involved in the whole task um, has then led to more engagement. But then my physio brain is leading me to say that that, that template and going through that component is that graded exposure sort of component. So, um, cause I think about that from like a chronic pain point of view. So we're slowly trying to expose back to those sort of yeah. experiences. So I really like that. That's a good <laughs> example. So hopefully that gives some insight into a broad topic, but some of the great things that dietitians do. So around this area. So if you're seeing somebody that may be having some challenges with their uh, interactions with food and behaviours change, uh, think about referring to a dietitian. So hopefully that's been helpful. Thanks for your time and we'll see you in the next episode.